Good morning, church, and welcome back to the virtual launch, a place where we all can be together but apart. Take it away, guys. Good morning, church, and welcome back to our virtual lounge. Now, I know it has been many months since we've been able to come together and meet physically as the body of Christ, and I'm sure each and every one of you must be missing um, just being able to come together. I know I have, which is why I've got some great news for you today. So starting next week, we are going to be having our physical services once again. Yay! Okay, so um, this is in line with the SOPs and regulations that have been set out by the Selangor State Government and the NECF. So our first service will happen next Saturday on the 11th of July at 5pm. Yes, Saturday, not Sunday guys. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we will be adhering to strict rules and SOPs which means that we are operating at a reduced capacity. And what that means is that we will need your help to make sure that we can have service happen. And so we will be sending out a Google form that we will need you to fill up to let us know how many of you are coming from your home in order for us to prepare the place for you. Now, the form will be sent to you through your cell leaders along with a message on the criteria and eligibility of who can and cannot attend. So be sure to read up and if you have any questions, I'm sure your cell leaders will be more than happy to help you. Now, while we're all super excited to come together and worship together and just see each other, um, we definitely will need everyone to cooperate. So on our end, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be sanitizing the whole sanctuary. We're going to be practicing temperature checks when you walk in through the door. And we're going to make sure that social distancing measures are put in place. And what we will need from you is to practice good hygiene, to wear a mask, to um, scan the QR code when you come in and register, and to sanitize. And most importantly, uh, we're so excited to have you back and we can't wait to see each and every one of you together again next Saturday. That's it guys. I hope um, you enjoy the rest of the service. Stay blessed. Good morning church. We're so glad that you can join us this Sunday morning. Before we begin with uh, praise and worship, let's just commit this time to the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, just for this Sunday morning, Lord, and that we have come together here as your people, Lord, just to worship you, to give you praise, to honor you for all that you've done, Lord, all that you will do, Lord. We pray, Lord, that even as we open up our hearts, Lord, as this time where we're welcoming you, Holy Spirit, to be filled in this room, Lord, and also in our hearts, Lord, we just pray that whatever that is on our hearts, on our minds, Lord, that we will lay it down at your feet, Lord. We want to come into your presence, Lord, with a surrendered heart, Lord, and with a heart, Lord, that is open and just full of thanks, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord. I pray, Lord, Father, for whatever burdens that is on our hearts, Lord, whatever, Lord, that we're coming with, Lord, on our minds, Lord, we pray that you will help us, Lord, today. Let your spirit move, Lord, in this worship, Lord, and let every people, Lord, every person that is watching this, every family, Lord, Father, that they'll be touched, Lord, Father, by your spirit, Lord, and that this worship, Lord, will be incense to you, Lord, Father, as an offering, Lord, of, of just our time, Lord, and also just our hearts, Lord, open up to you, Lord, just to honor you and just to give you glory, Lord, for you are worthy of it all, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, worship team, and once again, good morning to everyone at home. So right now, I'd like to pass the time to Auntie Shantini for this week's offer tree. Good morning, church. Have you ever felt what you have to give to God is so small, it is so insignificant, it's like a drop in the ocean. But with God, it is not like that. Whatever we have that we give to God, He is able to take it and multiply it and use it for His kingdom. 
whether we give in need or in plenty, God is able to use it. I just want to go, uh, go through a couple of scriptures with you and share some examples of how others were able to give in need and God was able to multiply it. The first scripture is taken from 1 Kings chapter 17. We see Elijah, the prophet of God, he went to Zarephath and a widow was supposed to feed him. This widow was so poor, she only had a bin of flour and a little jar of oil and she was going to make a cake for herself and her son and they were going to eat it and they were going to die. But Elijah said to her, make that cake for me and give it to me first. And she obeyed. She obeyed the man of God. She and Elijah was a representation of God. And she obeyed this, this man of God and gave that cake to him first. And even as she did that, she found that her bin of flour and her oil, little jar of oil never ran dry. There was sufficient for her to make food for her son and herself and the man of God for the rest of their lives. Another example is in 2 Kings chapter 4. Again, a, a widow, you know, her, her husband had just died and her husband left her in debt. She had creditors who were coming to her door and she had two sons and she was so afraid that they may take her sons as slaves or whatever. But, you know, so she came running to Elisha, the man of God, and she said, what shall I do? You know, I'm, I'm in such need. And Elisha said, what have you got in the house? And again, she said, I only have a little jar of oil. And he said, yes, take that little jar of oil. And then she, he said to her, go to the various the friends, your neighbors, and collect as many vessels as you can and bring them in. And that's what she did. And as she did that, a little jar of oil, he said, now take that jar and pour into all the vessels. And as she did that, she found that her jar kept filling all the vessels until they were full. And then Elisha said to her, go sell this oil. And then from the money that you get from that oil, you will be able to pay your creditors. So you see, she experienced a miracle when she just gave what she had in the house. As another example in the New Testament, uh, something that we know, uh, we know more, of, uh, more of us know about it. It's the uh, how Jesus fed the five thousand. Again, the disciples were saying, "How are we going to feed five thousand in Bua in the wilderness?" And Jesus said, "What have we got? All they had was a little boy's lunch, two fish and five loaves." Jesus said, "Bring that to me." And as he was able to give thanks. And as they began to feed the people, it just kept multiplying. The people were fed, they were full, and there were 12 baskets left over. Friends, whether we are in need or in plenty, God's principle is for us to give. And even as we give, God will cause that miracle to take place in your life, and you will be blessed. Let's pray. Even as we give this morning, there's a, there's a bank account number on the screen. Even as we give, let's ask God to perform a miracle in our lives because He knows our need. Father, even as we come before you this morning, we pray for the offering, Lord. Even as your people give into the online bank account, we pray, Father, that you'll bless your people. And Lord, that they will see miracles after miracles taking place, even as they give in obedience. Lord, we just want to thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Auntie Shantini. And next up, we have this week's announcements. Good morning, uh, City of Revival Church. It is such a joy to bring the Word of God to you this morning. I want to acknowledge Pastor Suresh and his wife and all the leaders and the pastors for giving me this opportunity to bring the word this morning to you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have got a prophetic exhortation for the entire church and all of you leaders. It's in Psalms 125 verses 1 and 2. Uh, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. And verse 2 tells us, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds 
his people from this time forth forevermore. Praise God. That's the word of prophetic exaltation for you. Glory to God. You know, in this pandemic, one thing is for sure. You know what? The Lord has brought the families together. In bringing the families together, especially the household of faith, God has renewed the anointing and the authority and the trust in prayer. If you notice, people are more prayerful rather than fearful right now. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be watchful and be serious concerning prayer. Praise God. This morning, my text is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 6. I entitled this short message, Your Secret Place with God. Just before I read the text, I like to uh, give you an introduction to this text. In, in Luke, the 11th chapter, the disciples saw Jesus praying. Once he had finished praying, the disciples went to Jesus and said this to him. John uh, taught his disciples to pray. So therefore, can you teach us to pray? John taught his disciples the prayer of appeal or the prayer of repentance. But they saw uh, such an awesome authority and anointing over Jesus. They wanted Jesus to teach them the prayer of authority and anointing. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? And then Jesus teaches them two things. Number one, he taught them what to pray. Number two, he taught them how to pray. In teaching them what to pray, uh, in Matthew the 6th chapter, verses 9 through 15, Jesus told them, this is the way you pray. He said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. He went on to include another portion to this prayer. If you would forgive your brothers their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive uh, your trespass. But if you choose not to forgive the trespass of your brothers, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Praise God. And then he went on to teach them on how to pray. You know, friends, um, what to pray is not as important as how to pray. Now, what to pray can keep changing, but how to pray cannot change because that's the way we approach the throne room of God. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Then he goes on to teach them in Matthew the 6th chapter verse 5 and 6. And this is what Jesus said, do not be like the pretenders in verse 5. Do not be like the hypocrites. They like to stand in the synagogues and in the corners of the street to pray that men can see them and surely they have their reward. And you know that reward of pretending prayer and hypocritical prayer is a reward of unanswered prayer predicament, prayer frustration. And then Jesus went on in verse 6 and said, this is how we pray. And this is so crucial in this time of pandemic, in this time of uncertainty, that we need to know how to pray. Praise God. Your security in God is the one that brings security in all other areas of your life. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, he said, When you pray, Apabila Kamu Burdoa. When you pray, Jesus said, go into your room, shut the door. Okay? Shut the door. That's privacy. Everybody say privacy. 
And then he said, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And that is secrecy. Okay? Not secret society. Secrecy. And then, number three, he said, your father who sees you in secret, your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Oh, glory to God. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. I've often said this. If you don't have a secret prayer life, you will not have an effective Christian living. And I've often said this, if you don't have a secret prayer life, you will not have the secret recipe for your life from God. Is that wonderful? Come on, somebody say amen, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 talks about the secret recipe that God has for each one of us in our life. And the scripture tells us, but as it is written, eyes has not seen, no ears have heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the excellent things that God has prepared for those who love him. And verse 10, he said, these things are revealed by the Holy Spirit, for the Spirit of God searches the deep things. And this searching is, is only possible in the secret place of your prayer life. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? You know, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse uh, 4, verse 4 and verse 14, describes the nature of the secret place. The secret place journey with God. And it goes like this. He brought me to the banqueting house or table. And his banner over me is love. And then in verse, verse, verse 14, he describes the intensity of the secret place. Oh my dove, in the clefts of the rock. In the secret place of the cleave. Let me see. Look at this. The secret place of the cleave. Let me see your face. Let me hear your worries. For your voice is, is, is sweet and your face is lovely. Isn't that wonderful? David tells us about the secret place activity. In Psalms 27 verse 4. And he said this, one thing have I desired, that which I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold his face, and to inquire in his temple. In other words, I long to see your face, and I long to hear your voice. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? You know, friends, this morning, I'm going to share with you the, the need for your secret place with God to be reestablished. That's the need. That's the purpose of this message. But before I go any further, i like you to know, even though this pandemic has brought forth restricted movement, social distancing, and all kinds of hygienic practices, God is still at move in our lives. Just two days ago, I was having my coffee in a, a restaurant in Jehovah, Ashoka. I think Pastor Suresh will know. And Dr. James, you would know too. And uh, here, I, I was seated with uh, two of our church members. They brought somebody else. And at the table, I began to speak to this woman about Jesus. And she told me, I still have a vivid memory of my Sunday school. You know, Then I told her this. Having Jesus in the memory, having Jesus 
in your Bible is not going to help you. You have to have Jesus in your heart. When I said that, she began to tear, became teary. And I asked her this question after sharing with her Revelation 3.20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and if they would open, I'll come in, I'll be with them, and they will be with me. As I shared the scripture, by this time, all this less than five minutes, she began to tear, and I asked her, do you want Jesus to come into your heart? Not just in your memory, not in your uh, remembrance. And she said, yes. And I just led her to the Lord. And uh, yesterday I gave her the Purpose Driven Life book so that she could, you know, journey with Jesus. See, the harvest is ready. Even though our atmosphere looks so tight and fearful, but the harvest is ready. Isn't that wonderful? And then yes, therefore yesterday afternoon, you know, there was this lady who came to see my wife, Betty, and my wife said, could you just pray for her? And I asked her, what do you want me to pray? She said, I have come here with the instruction from God to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. I asked her, where do you need the power of God? And she told me she has got a collapsed disc, a backbone, five, six, and seven. And they all collapse into one another at the back. And as we begin to pray in the name of Jesus, there was an instantaneous miracle. God just set her free. You see, the power of God is at work. The presence of God is at work. Therefore, I want to encourage you, don't be discouraged. Even though we are in this pandemic, from MCO to CMCO, now to RMCO, the next will be uh, RCRC, City Revival Church. The church is going to be open. Glory to God. Come on, somebody say man, please. Is that wonderful? You know, friends, let's go back to the message. The secret place of God. The secret place of God. You know, friends, as I said earlier, prophetically, during this pandemic, the things that God has restored to us as a family is the anointing in the family in prayer, the authority in, in prayer, and the trust in prayer. You know, Jesus practiced the secret place. It was not a habit for Jesus, but it was a habitation. He practiced it until he saw the Father face to face. And the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. See how he practices. We learn from this practice. You wonder how to practice the secret place, that your Father can reward you openly. The Bible tells us now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, could be three o'clock, he went out and departed to a solitary place, a private place, and there he prayed. I believe Jesus was just lovesick. Like Solomon said, I long to hear your voice in the secret place of the cleft Cleave, I long to hear your voice. I long to see your face because your voice is so sweet and your face is so lovely. Isn't that wonderful? And then we read in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, he would often go to the, to the, to the wilderness. He will withdraw himself, withdraw himself to the wilderness, and there he prayed. He prayed in the secret place. And then the Bible tells us in Matthew 14, 23, when he sent the multitudes away so tired, he went up to the mountain by himself, himself to pray. Now evening came, he was there. He was, he was journeying with the Father and the Holy Spirit through the secret place activity. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 6 and verse 12, now it came to pass in those days Jesus would go to the mountain. Today we go to the mountain for retreat. Some of us go to the mountain, Gunting Highlands, quietly go and gamble. I hope it, it's not happening. 
But Jesus went to the mountain and continued all night praying with God. Wow. Now you know how you can practice your secret place activity. Come on, somebody say amen, please. I like to reiterate Matthew, the sixth chapter and verse six. Jesus said, when you pray, when you pray, Rama, Renita, Reshara, and all you, you know, you guys, when you pray, he said, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father in the secret place. Your father who sees you in secret, that's intimacy. Your father, privacy, secrecy, intimacy. Your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly, glory to God. Come on, somebody shout amen please. Hudson Taylor, the first inland missionary to China, he said this, the secret to our failure is in not maintaining our secret place with God. The secret to our failure is because we don't maintain our secret place with God. Charles Finney, a great revivalist, said this, a man who kneels down before God he will be the man who will stand up well before men. Sorry, I repeat. A man who kneels down before God is the man who will stand best before men. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? And then John Wesley, a great revivalist, he said this. When you pray, God moves. And God doesn't move without prayer. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. You know, friends, we all have prayer struggles. There's MCO, CMC, and our MCO has given us plenty of time, not just to rest, but also to retreat to a place of prayer. Isn't it true? And that has happened to me. I'm sure it has happened to you too. And friends, our prayer struggle is Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse 40 and 41. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Sleeping. Tidor. In Cantonese, it's fun cow. And say to Peter, what, could you not watch with me for one hour? And then Jesus then gives them the reason why they cannot tarry in prayer. Watch and pray. They are not watching. They are not praying. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing. But the flesh is weak. I'm sure everyone who's listening to this message, you have a desire to pray because prayer is the breath of God to our Christian journey with Him. Every one of us have a desire to pray, but that desire must move to a place of discipline. From the place of discipline, it must move to a place of determination, and that Determination then will move your prayer to a place of delight. Like songs of Solomon, I love to hear your voice. I love to see your face because your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. As I come to the close of this message, my friends who are in City Revival, uh, City Revival Church, my challenge is this to you. Your Intimacy with God defines your effective journey with God. I repeat, your intimacy with God defines the quality of life and journey that you do with God. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? If there's one thing I've learned in the ministry, it is this secret place activity. 
You know, friends, I challenge you. The quality of your intimacy will define the quality of your journey with Jesus. The quality of your, your intimacy with God will determine the quality of God's divine intervention in your life. I am a firm believer. If there is no intimacy, there is no intercession. And if there's no intercession, there is no intervention of God. I want to challenge you. If you're sitting there and your prayer dried, if you're sitting there, your prayer tired, if you're sitting there, your prayer slothful, wake up, wake up. It's your intimacy will finally determine the quality of your prophetic destiny with God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Wake up to pray. Glory to God. You know, friends, this is so true. We read in Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 and 5 to 9. You look at the scripture. Now, this is about rebuilding the temple of God. They were so busy after the Babylonian captivity. They were building panel houses for themselves. They were more interested in building a visible house than an invisible house that, was, that will apply to us today. Now, therefore, thus says uh, Haggai the prophet, the Lord of hosts says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. And it says, you have sown much. Yeah, but you bring in little. You eat, but, but you, you don't have enough. You drink, but your thirst is still there. And then you, 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 you clothe yourself, but you're not warm. He who earns wages, put it into the bags with a hole. And you wonder why. The spiritual, the spiritual nature of your prayer life will determine the natural nature of your walk as a Christian. Glory to God. Come on, somebody say amen, please. And verse 9 says, and verse 9, Haggai chapter 1, verse 9 says, you, verse, verse, verse 10, sorry, verse 10 says, Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth and its fruit. And, and, and go, therefore, go to the mountains. Go to the mountains. Verse 8, go up to the mountains. Bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. And I say this to you today. Build your inward temple. Build your secret places. Remove those prayerlessness. Remove this prayer laziness. Remove that prayer, unanswered prayer predicament. Remove the unbelief in your prayer. By faith, come and begin to build your secret place with the first love of yours. And when you are found in the secret place of God, you will be found in the open blessings of God. Go back to your closet prayer life. Go back to your prayer, private prayer life. You know, friends, in closing, David said this in Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. And this is the intensity we need to have in our prayer life. Oh God, you are my God. Look at the intensity. You know, we use the word, oh God, for all our negative situations. Oh God. But he said, oh God, my God. Look at the tugging in his heart. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And he goes on to say in verse 2. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. You know friends, you know where, what's the sanctuary? Your secret place. To see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say amen, please. Hallelujah. Can you stand together with me, please? Thank you, dear Father. Lord, I commit everyone who's watching 
this video into your hands. Rekindle our first love. That we will go back to our private prayer life, our closet prayer life. That we will not be prayer lazy. We will not be prayer slothful. We will not be prayer tired. Rekindle our first love. Bring us back to the place of prayer. My friends, your hands are lifted up. Some of us may be wondering what to pray in your private closet prayer life. I build seven altars every day. And if you can just spend five minutes to build these altars, you've already prayed 35 minutes. Eventually, this routine will become a river of life. This habit will become the habitation of God's presence. Number one, I build an altar of thanksgiving. As in Psalms 100 and verse 4, I give thanks to God. Number two, I build an altar of repentance. As in 1 John 1 9, has God to cleanse me that I may be a vessel approved of God. Number three, I build an altar of praise and worship. As in Psalms 22 verse 3, praise and worship brings the presence of God into my secret place. Number four, I build an altar of the Spirit. I pray in tongues. And I speak in tongues as in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 and 4, to edify and speak to God directly. Number five, I build an altar of intercession. As in Ezekiel 22, 30, and I pray for those needs that are like a burden. Number six, I build an altar of the word. Prayerfully, I read a portion of scripture. As in Psalms 119, verses 97 to 100, that the Lord will speak to me. And finally, the seventh altar, I build an altar of waiting. As in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they will mount up with wings like eagles. And this seven altar sometimes takes two hours for me, sometimes two and a half hours. If you're a beginner, you could just take five minutes in each altar, or two and a half minutes, and slowly build it up, slowly build it up. And uh, you know, friends, within a month, your prayer will no longer be a drag, it will become a delight. Father, I just pray for those uh, that need, uh, those who desire to pray, intensify this desire. I pray for fresh anointing and authority over their private prayer life, that they will have, uh, they will have intercession and intervention of God in, in their private prayer life. Bless them, those that are sick in the body. God, I just minister healing right now. Those that have got migraine condition, I command the migraine to be healed in the name of Jesus back condition and uh, vomiting condition and gastric condition. If there be anyone who has got pain in the body, I command the pain to be removed in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare each one of them to be healed right now. No matter what their condition is, touch them, dear Father. Those at home who have lost their job, they will be able to find a job. Those who have got a financial difficulty, that you will supply their needs, dear Father. No, no matter what their situation is, Lord, you gave a prophetic word over the church. Lord, they are like Mount Zion, surrounded by the mountains. Those who trust in God are like this. They will not be shaken. They will abide forever. Bless the church. Bless the pastors and leadership. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. And with this, the service is over. Thank you, Pastor Rajan, for the incredible message. I hope all of you at home have been blessed. That's it for today. Stay safe and see you all next week.